Maximum parsimony is also known as minimum evolution methods and uh, assumption is that evolution takes the shortest routes and uh, it tries to find a tree uh, that explain the data with as many as uh, few evolutionary changes as possible. And there are two basic fundamentals. Uh, number one is that mutations are exceedingly rare events in nature. And number two is a model that invokes uh, more unlikely events, like for example, that shows more mutations is less likely correct. So a correct model uh, should have uh, minimum mutations or minimum changes in it. So the relationships that requires the fewest number of mutations uh, to explain the data is uh, more likely a correct relationship. Uh, what we do over here is uh, in order to do this parsimony, uh, we try to find about uh, what is the information content present in those alignments. So for example, uh, we can come up with multiple sequence alignment and then we look into the sites as being uh, informative versus uh, less informative sites. So we try to rely the sites which are more informative. The sites uh, which are having at least two uh, different nucleotides at each position uh, with at least having a twice representation of each of them uh, can be taken as an informative positions. For example, if we look into this data set, we come with six columns. So column number one is non-informative since we don't find any substitutions. All nucleotides are of the same kind. Column two, we find just one substitution. So we can say it is also less informative. Three is less informative because we don't have twice representations of these nucleotides and same is the case with the four. So if we take five and six, we have two G's and two A's and here we have two G's and two T's. So we can say that these are the informative sites. So we make the tree by using these sites. Okay guys, so let's take this position number five or column five and we make up these trees. So since we have four sequences or four leaves in these trees, we can have uh, three different possible unrooted trees you know, after we remove the duplicates. So in top left position, we see that uh, we have the tree where we have here goes our G. Then we have on sequence one, uh, we have G on sequence two. And uh, in third, we have A and fourth we have A again. So we can have this arrangement and we see there are black lines. So black lines are where we have matches and we have red lines where we have substitutions. So in this tree we recognize that there are two substitutions. One is here where an A changes to G and here is the second one. Uh, same way we can do one, four, uh, one, two, three and four like this. Again, we have uh, two mutations or two changes. In the middle, we draw those internal nodes uh, where we can have their hypothetical ancestors uh, like here, here. The third tree, we find only one mutation. So this is the tree, which is the maximum parsimonious tree that have minimum changes in it. So this tree is the more likely tree as far as this scenario is concerned is bottom one. Same way we can take this position number six and again we see that we have two changes right here one and one. There are two in this trees and there is just one change in this third one. So this this one is the most likely tree as far as this scenario is concerned. So uh, we see that uh, these uh, maximum parsimony methods, they believe in minimum evolution. So all those trees uh, where we have minimum changes or minimum mutations, uh, they can be regarded as the uh, correct trees reconstructed.